This one's going to be a three-parter, so buckle in. I've got some catching up to do. The first part, we're going to talk about the new conflict that's going live with the new summoner and a new ability. It'll be going live about the same time this video goes live. The second thing we're going to talk about is a governance pre-proposal, talking about ghost cards being used in liquidity bots in modern. And finally, I'm going to round things out by opening up some chess. So if this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey all you splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying, hey, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. Well, I've been out of pocket doing a family event uh, for the last week, but I'm trying to get back up and running, get back in the saddle. We've got some things to talk about. The first thing is the new conflict that should be starting right about the same time that this video goes live. Um, and it features a obviously a new card, which is a summoner. And we're gonna talk about that and that summoner has a new ability. So let's jump right in. And as always, I will leave the applicable links in the show notes if you want to check them out. Over on Peak D, you can read a full uh, description of this new uh, conflict. Um, I like the fact that um, they go into detail and flesh out the story behind the conflict. I think it's interesting. Um, there's a lot of people that don't don't because they're just in it for uh, you know the pure ROI on the game. But from a game aspect, I think it's interesting. So I'll leave the link if you want to read through it. So let's go ahead and scroll down. The uh, name is called a call to arms, anarchy in the northeast. Um, so you can read through the story and we will scroll down because what we are interested in is the new summoner and yep it's called cryptic and you can see the stats there I'll leave them up for a minute in fact I will blow them up a little bit and you can see that and we will look at the stats go back to the stats um, Obviously, it's Water Death, a uh, legendary tactic summoner. He comes with a negative one speed and blind for your entire team. Um, on, the other, on the other side, as far as tactics goes, he gives Retaliate and Enfeeble to two of your units, which puts a real hurting on the opponent's melee attackers, which is what they said here. Uh, basically, he's going to be an anti-melee on that side. And the other side, he's going to give two units of poison um, and... Here it is, the new ability, Expose. So what's Expose? You can see the new, uh, the new little icon there. Looks like a guy kind of exploding uh, or kind of an explosion behind an armor suit with a downward pointing arrow. And what this means now is 50% chance to remove Force Field, Lookout, Reflection Shield, Shield, Void, Void Armor, cleanse or immunity after a successful attack wow that's pop uh, that's uh i can't even wrap my head around where this is going to go into the rule set but i can see that this is going to be um i think this is going to be popular because it's going to be i think a specific use case scenario and of course that is yet to be seen but uh, expose removes a random damage reduction ability or immunity cleanse, essentially exposing your enemy to the full brunt of your attacks. Poison is just salt on the wound. Strip your opponent of immunity, slap a poison on them, and drink up their tears. And of course the guy's name is Cryptic, and so they say Cryptic will open up a whole new breadth of strategy. You want him? Stake your cards in the conflict for your chance at them. Sweet airdrops. And there's the large blow up of the art. That's interesting. That is really interesting. So uh, this was one of my favorite color combinations in Magic. I got to be real. So obviously there's not a whole lot of uh, bleed over and, and comparisons between Magic the Gathering and uh, Splinterlands. But blue-black hmm, should be interesting. Okay, switching gears here. We have an SPS governance pre-proposal up right now for vote. So take a look at it. Um, and I can sum this up. You can go through and read it. However, basically what the point here is currently the liquidity bots um, are being fielded with owned cards by the company. Um, and it is limited by the cards that are available uh, for that usage. Okay, so... 
we've all played games where you had a PVE mode, okay? And basically it's just the you're just playing the computer, okay? So what the goal here is, I think, is to make it easier for the team to provide liquidity bots in all the different ranges and not be limited by actual cards that are owned by the team, okay? Currently the liquidity bots are all fielded uh, or all uh, stocked with cards owned by the team and they're somewhat limited by the levels of the cards and etc. If they didn't have that limitation then they would be able to flesh out and give a full range of liquidity bots uh, levels and all across the range so my take on it is that it would be easier to get into modern and play is it going to be easier to win not necessarily you're still going to have to have good strategy you're still going to have to have decent level cards to go ahead and rise up the the levels however you're not going to be in silver and playing against a max level you know deck against somebody else right okay so uh, I voted for this, okay? So a lot of people are saying, well, you voted to kick out uh, bots uh, from from Modern. Why are you wanting to put them back in? I know there's going to be some fire in the comments. Go for it. But my take on it is that um, these bots are completely different than the bot farms, okay? These bots are aimed at making the game more playable for the those of us who actually would like to try to play in Modern, okay? and they're not taking anything out of the game i think that is the key point right there so if you think i'm wrong let me know in the comments either way i'll leave the uh link uh you know the url for this in the show notes take a look at it and make your voice be known hopefully this will go up for a uh, a full vote I voted for it. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell him. Tell me why I'm right in the comments. Okay. Now with those news items out of the way, uh, we can get to the kind of the fun part. Okay. So I've been out of pocket for a week, um, and I have a balance of a 412,000 uh, glint. And I want to go ahead and make my purchases for this week or this season um, because I haven't been able to make one. Uh, basically improve my deck in the last week. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the shop. Um, I'm going to leave a link in, I know I'm showing, uh, I'm, I'm leaving a lot of links in the show notes, but I want to, I want to give credit where credit is due. I watched a video by Gathering the Magic today, and he went through, as always, he's very good with the numbers, but he went through and he compared doing rarity draws versus spending your glint on loot chests. And I'm not going to give anything away because if you want to know uh, what he came up with, go ahead and check out his video. Um, but uh, this is going to influence uh, my decisions here. Okay. Now, last time I bought anything with Glint, I went with rare draws. Okay. So my point is that I want to try and max out my soulbound summoners as soon as possible. Okay, so with that said, I'm looking more at the loot chest. Now, last time around, I bought 10 uh, ultimate, loot, uh, ultimate loot chests, but um, that was the day they initially came out. Now, I'm kicking myself for not buying more at that point in time. We all know what happened. We all know that the numbers were uh, off and what the fallout of that was. Um, so I don't necessarily, yes, I'm kicking myself for not buying more, but I'm not exactly saying that the numbers should not have been changed because when I first saw the numbers, I'm like, you know, that's alt awfully high to get, uh, you know, one of the big rewards. And we saw a lot dropping. So enough with that said, I think that uh, that has been gone over enough. But what I'm going to do is, as I discussed, the first thing I'm always going to buy every, uh, every week or every season is going to be my um, 10... Um, 10, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, 10 packs of merits or whatever you want to call them. My first batch of merits. Okay. So that'll give me uh, one case, a Gladius case to open. So let's go back to the shop. Now, the second thing I'm going to do is I believe this time around, I'm going to go with one batch of ultimate chests, which is 10 at this point. So that gives me 25,000. We're going to do 10 of those. So let's check them out. Uh, nothing's shaking. 
Okay, so nice. We are starting off with three summoners, Octavia Shadow Meld, uh, 14 alchemy potions, 15 legendary potions, 6 alchemy potions, 2,081 merits, uh, 10 fire callers, 1,700 merits, uh, 12 alchemy potions, 8 riverboat captains, and 14 alchemy potions. So not a whole lot. I mean, I got some summoners here. And we have enough to buy another uh, pack. So let's go ahead and close that, or another case, as it were. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. What we're going to do is we're going to do a full batch of major chests. Um, and together, those two, the 10 ultimate chests and the 50 major chests, will give me a total of 50,000 glint spent. And we'll see what we come up with here. And then we'll go over and look at the Gladius cases, see how many we can get. Okay, so let's just go one by one. 515 merits and energy, 585 merits, four alchemy potions, six alchemy potions, another energy, seven legendary potions, 640 merits, seven legendary potions, another riverboat captain, five coastal sentries, six uh, dry bone barbarians, four possessed puppets, three imperial knights, a lot of commons going on here, five energy, 748 merits, four alchemy potions, uh, five war pegasus, five alchemy potions, three legendary potions, two more dry bone barbarians, six terracious grunt, six fire caller, 403 merits, 356 merits, seven alchemy potions, five swamp spitters, five wily coyotes, four possessed puppets, six legendary potions, Six more possessed puppets, six legendary potions, a bunch of potions going on here. Four legendary potions, three alchemy potions, 606 merits, three uh, possessed puppets, three terracious grunts, 444 merits, three wily coyotes, five more energy. Uh, might have to pump up my uh, Archmage bot to play a few more rounds today. 593 merits. Six alchemy potions, uh, four Dumaki orcs, three legendary potions, three alchemy potions, 444 merits again. For a random number, 444 came up twice. Wow. 660 merits, uh, four legendary potions, uh, three more possessed puppets, and three more energy. While we're here, I want to discuss uh, something someone said, and I'm sorry, I forget who exactly did it, um, but thanks for bringing it up. Um, on my last video, when I opened up chests, I had stated that um, SPS was not contained in chests anymore, which it isn't directly. However, indirectly it is. And thanks to those, uh, the person that brought this up, sorry, I don't remember your name, but um, energy can be directly correlated with SPS, okay? So uh, if you figure that you're going to win maybe 50% of the time, uh, unless you're in modern, right? <laughs> um, if you're in wild, then five energy might equate to two wins, might equate to three wins, right? And then you can just figure out how much SPS you get off of that, depending upon how much you have staked and all the other variables, right? So uh, shout out to that person for going ahead and bringing that up. So SPS isn't directly in the chest, but indirectly it is. So this round of chess, it was all right. Uh, nothing great here, right? You know, so we, we probably have enough for another Gladius case. So let's go ahead and check that out. Let's go on over to the shop and go to the guild. So I have 12,000, so that gives me enough for six Gladius cases. So let's go ahead and buy them and see what I got. So plenty of merits this time around. Okay, let's go ahead and open. Open all six. Cross my fingers. See what I got. We'll just run through them. Okay, we got a Paladin Rack, Crash, Alfredo times three. Trouble times three, Orella times two, uh, Chimney Wall Stop, Whistling Damon, a Captain Katie, a Hugo, three Hugos, two Isgal Dvorst, uh, two Relinor Cleaver, uh, Helmet Carfax, uh, an Edith. I use her quite often. Uh, usually has to be a higher mana match though. 
I like to fit her in there. Uh, Bertrand Gobson, I like that one as well, in low mana. Uh, Lisa Fox, and uh, three Witch of Warwick. So, once again, nothing great, but not terrible, right? Okay. So, let's go ahead and just for a minute, let's take a look at my Soulbound here and see where we're at. Okay, so Crash is at level 5, Chimney Wall Stop is at level 4. I'll do those later. Orella. I've had quite a time trying to level these up. I guess everybody has. It, it just takes so much to level these uh, Gladius cards up. Uh, I've been doing it since they came out, and you can see where I'm at here. Like, this guy's still level 3. These are rares. Any day now. I haven't combined in a little while. I think the last time I bought some Gladys packs, I just didn't combine them all. Alva the Crusher, I use her once a while. Level 5 is gold. Still going to be at level 5. Don't use him too often. Once in a while. Alfredo. is at level four. Now this is one I use quite often. This is still going to be level three. What's he pick up? Uh, at level five he picks up Inspire. Wow! I need this guy at level five stat. We got Edith. Still going to be at level two. Oh, wow, I'm going to level him. He's going to be level 5. Mm, he doesn't pick up anything to level 6, and he gets poison. Oh, nice. This is going to turn into a really nice card. Catrelba, she's. I've already got her up there to pick up that third power. I am going to level her though. No, I'm not. Almost. At level 5, she picks up Snare. Sweet. I use her quite often. I think a lot of people do. Don't use this guy very often. I figured you might like to see where my Gladius cards sit after, like I said, I've been. I've been working on these ever since they came out. This guy's gonna level. Paladon Rack. I don't use him very often though. Me level four. And I'm gonna leave those like that. If I get enough to level her, I will go ahead and level her. Um, She's at level 3. At level 4, oh, she's got immunity already, but at level 5 she'll pick up Dispel. 
That'll be pretty sweet. He's going to level. Another one I don't use very often. I know, I know. Those of you out there are saying, he's selecting each card and then combining. You don't have to do that. It's just muscle memory. That's the best thing I can say about it. Hugo. Don't use this one very often, but I figure, hey, it's there. If my bot wants to use it, it can use it. And I'll come back and combine these other ones. This one's not quite there yet. Need five more. Whistling Damon. I do use this from time to time because black has a strong range field for me. If I need to go range, a lot of times I'll use death. This one's going to level. Level five. I don't know if she picks up anything though. Nope. No new level on this one either. Don't use that. I do use Lisa Fox from time to time and it will level. Let's see if she picks up anything for level four. No. Uh, yeah, she does. Picked up stun. Nice. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. I like the look of this, but I'm never very effective with it. I guess he would come in handy with um, rule set where you can use uh, melee from any position. I think I would use him on that. But death isn't like my primary selection for if I'm going to do a primary melee attack. Okay, the rest of these I'll sum up and I'll work with off camera. Anyway, I mean, thanks for joining me. A couple different news items uh, about the game and uh, some chess openings and some card combinations. What can you say? Well, I'm back in the saddle again. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. This has been Bronze Dragon saying, see you on the flip side.